this role? Does it feel very different? No, not really. Um, you know, a lot of consistency within the coaching group. Danny's obviously come on board to work with the forwards now. Rob has um, accepted the position as captain. Uh, Mark's been here a couple of years with me as well, so uh, we're in familiar surroundings. Um, so hopefully there's um, it's not too much uh, disruption. Um, delighted to obviously get the opportunity to to head up the uh, the coaching setup, um, but not too much will change. Do you keep the tracks on most of the time, and other people maybe? help cover the director of rugby type duties or how, how do you get that balance? Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, my uh, my priority is to coach uh, and uh, that won't change. I'm still young in terms of my coaching experience and as we all are and I think it's, it's really important that I'm given the support which is something that um, we've spoken a lot about over the last few weeks uh, that I can carry on that coaching development and make sure that um, you know, my priority is, is to be on the pitch every session um, and then other things can be supported around that. You know, for me that's the uh, the priority and it, and it always will be. Simon, when you were offered the job, how long did it take you to say yes? Not long. Um, it's, uh, it's not every day that you get a chance to, um, to head up a a great club like this, um, you know, I wouldn't have been here as long as I have if, I, if it didn't mean something to me. Uh, and with Nigel's departure, it allowed um, me and the other coaches to, to step forward, and it's given us an opportunity to to set out our own path and, and hopefully um, start to deliver some some success for the club. What the challenges you face? Um, we, we've been good over the last few years of developing players and, and obviously our record speaks for itself in terms of the amount of um, players that we've produced for the national team, um, but when we look at probably our results and our success in terms of what the team has done, we probably have fallen below some standards and below where we think we should be. So the big challenge for me is to actually step beyond that and say, OK, yes, we've been good over the last couple of years, but as a team, we haven't won anything. And I think we have to be um, be strong enough to say we, we, we will do better this year. We have to do better. Uh, two top five places finishes in the, in the rabbit direct isn't good enough. And it's uh, the big challenge for us is to to get more out of the players we've got, more out of the, the coaching setup, and hopefully that will allow us to take that next step into quarterfinals in <coughs> Europe, into semi-finals of Rabo Direct, and so we're challenging consistently uh, for silverware. How much um, more recruitment have you got to do? Um, there's a couple of positions we'd still like to, to fill, and. We've been um, we've been working hard over the last um, few weeks and months. Really, um, we've all taken a um, have all had a contribution to that, and it's it is something that Mark and the board have been very supportive of, um, and recruiting in the right areas, getting the right people in. Um, so there is a, still a couple of positions we'd like to fill, but as it stands at the moment. Um, we are just in the process of trying to get that done and dusted over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, uh, by the time everyone's back in, the international players are back in, we know our, our squad and we're comfortable and we can move forward and not feel like there's any holes in it. Is it a kind of balancing act between you know, the desire to bring youngsters, bring grown youngsters on as you have them, but also perhaps need for some expediency and bring in experience for the overseas players in as well? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think. Um, the amount of players we do um, develop for the national team and obviously the players that are away at certain times, we have a, um, a large chunk of our squad that are not here for large periods of the season. Last year was a bit of an exception with the World Cup, uh, the Autumn International, then the Six Nations and the Summer Tour, so there's a lot more um, 
expected of the international players last year, but we'd, we'd hope that we'd produce that many internationals again, but below that we've got to have a, a, a strength in, in depth, and um, we are producing more players through our system, through the regional system, through the work that Gareth Jenkins is doing and the semi-pro teams are doing within our region, but we still have to underpin that with some real quality, and that's what where our uh, recruitment has been driven towards this season. So, would you be tempted to pick players like Danny? Uh, Danny's team the end of 20, someone like Samson Lee, Rob Evans, Kirby and Mariel, they've all made big statements at the Junior World Cup. How far off are they? Uh, they're not far off at all. I mean, Samson, um, Kirby and um, Rob have all been in our environment for a, um, a year. Um, they they're young in years, but they've had a, a very good exposure in, in South Africa. And as you said, they, they made a real statement, especially in the games against the uh, New Zealand team, twice uh, coming out on top, especially in the, the, the scrum exchanges. So those type of players, props in particular, do take uh, time to develop and mature. But um, I think our our thing has always been here, if, if they're good enough, they're old enough. And, you know, working with Danny um, only for the last couple of weeks, I see real um, quality in, in his technical coaching and I think he will um, give myself and Mark plenty to think about when it comes to uh, promoting some of those younger players and um, certainly on the technicalities, especially the scrum, which is becoming more and more important in the modern game. Danny will, will have a massive role to play in that. Um, myself and Mark will trust Danny's judgment if players, if he thinks players are ready to, to step up that level. They may not have played Rabo direct yet, but if they're ready and they're old, if they're good enough, then, then they'll be old enough. There's obviously maybe a couple of players still to come in, but what you're going to take on the strength of the squad? You've I've been impressed, you know, I've been impressed with the attitude of the players. Um, their response to, to the coaching staff and demands has been put on them in, in what is week one, we've got to remember that, it's early doors. Um, and also with Rob's leadership, you know, I've seen that already in the short space of time I've been here. The players respond to him um, and are responding to the coaches. And I do think, obviously, like everybody, it's that nice time of year, pre-season, no selection and everybody's friends with each other. Um, that, that will change, but no, at the moment I've been uh, impressed with, with everything I've seen so far. Simon, will we see any change in philosophy in the style? Is obviously something that requires continuity or your focus? No, I think you know, the way that Mark uh, wants to uh, to play in terms of with the ball, um, there won't be too much change. You know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We just want to get better at what we've been trying to do over the last couple of years. And like I said earlier, it's, it's not been good enough. So. Um, what we can do is, is individually and collectively we can be better at whatever we do and um, that comes down to um, individual work ethic um, and astuteness and awareness of, of what we need to improve on, um, especially individuals and then hopefully with that the team will be stronger um, you know, we still want to play a Skyless brand of rugby but also want to win things as well and you've just got to get that balance right and I think hopefully if we can get that balance right then then we'll be um, we'll be on the right track without losing too much of our um, uh, the way the Scarlets have always played that, that for me is you know is a, a given we have to play that way but within that we've got to be um, we've got to be more accountable for some of the things we do although your role Mark does that stay exactly the same and broaden um. <coughs> It's very similar, really. Um, I obviously came in on the skills coach, uh, head in, and uh, I, you know, luckily, I suppose uh, Nigel saw a little bit more in me than perhaps initially first thought, and I got sort of elevated uh, a little bit quicker than I expected. So I've been responsible for quite a bit of our attacking philosophy, a lot, you know, in partnership with the other coaches for the last couple of seasons. So I've enjoyed that side of it, and really felt it's been a huge benefit to me as a young coach to work with the other coaches. Obviously now I suppose there's a little bit more um, um, focus on me because 
the attacking side of the game predominantly lies with kind of how I see it and how I feel is best to move forward. But you know, as Simon said before, I, I just see myself as somebody who could, who's allowed the time to focus on attack a little bit more than the other coaches. It's, we all share each other's uh, views on all parts of the game, really. So. Um, it's not a case of if the attack's going well, it's, it's all my work, and if it's going badly, it's all mine. It's very much a team thing, and I'm comfortable with that, and always willing to learn. So I, I don't see a huge difference, but it, will, it does allow me to, to have a bit more of an influence on the team now. I can bring a little bit more of my own stamp to it, I suppose, and hopefully improve things. That's the important thing for me, just get better at what we're doing. Does one of you take Michael's spot in the touchline, just stay in your seat? Um, I, well, I don't know about the other guys, but I don't see myself going going back down there. It was, it was a poor position from my perspective in terms of viewing the game. You know, I didn't have the best view of everything. But what is good about being pitch side is you you do get a feel for the intensity, the conditions, uh, the type of talk that's going on in the field. So it's definitely you know, there's huge advantages to it. But probably having a little bit of an overview of where the space is, it, it does suit me a little bit better to be up in the stand. So I can't see me going down there anytime soon. Massive honour for me. Um, I've been here eight, nine years, and we've been fortunate to see a lot of those great captains in action, and particularly over the last few years, Matthew and Simon. Uh, so I, you know, I feel like I've you know, had a, a lesson, a long lesson from a lot of a lot of great captains before me. So just hopefully I can add another one to that list and get something for the region that we've uh, been working working hard towards for the last few years and realising some of this potential we've got. What kind of captain do you do? Um, I think it'll be pretty similar to Matthew and Simon. Not, hopefully I won't need to say too much, the boys know what I expect and you know, these guys wouldn't, wouldn't ask you to do anything they wouldn't do themselves or haven't done themselves. So the boys know that uh, hopefully I'll, well, I'll be out in front and uh, they'll follow me in there. Simon, is that why you've come for the role? It's sort of, it's like yourself, he's a bit of a warrior. Yeah, I think um, Rob just you know, he encapsulates everything that's good about this club. Um, he's been here a long time. He's served his apprentice uh, apprenticeship for longer than he would have liked, I'm sure. Um, it's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault for his staying in. <laughs> but he um, he demands the highest of standards. He has respect of his peers and of the coaching group, which is really important. And he. He realises as well that we probably haven't been uh, and haven't got the rewards that we maybe would have liked over the last couple of years, and, and uh, you know he's very driven towards us being successful here. And, um, I think you need somebody like that in that position, um, not only to you know, to drive some of the things that we want to do as coaches, but drive his own teammates as well. And as Rob said, he ask anyone else to do something that he wouldn't do himself and um, it's very important for me that if you're going to lead you've got to lead by example as much as about what you say it's about what you do and your actions and we've seen that from Rob for a number of years and now he's got the opportunity to take it to the next level and hopefully will be the one to lead us to, um, to some, um, some success this season. Simon, is Gareth Jenkins someone whose experience you would call on or do call on what kind of role Shape and coach you up. Yeah, I mean, Gareth has been here a number of years now uh, after coming back from the Welsh uh, setup, and he's still got massive involvement in the uh, development and the recruitment of, um, of players. You know, there's not many players within the region in particular that he, at uh, age group levels that he doesn't know about. Uh, he's got a serious eye for talent, and um, he will be a you know, a huge um, support for us as coaches, as, as a young group, um, you know, along with the other management group above that, and it's it's great to have his experience around us. Um, he, um, you know, he's part of the fabric here, but most importantly, he he's very very supportive of what we're trying to do, um, and he will be um, someone that we will be able to call upon uh, for that support at any stage, and I think we'll. Will, um, will benefit from his experience, uh, especially as, as, as you said earlier, we are, we're a young group, but um, we're very driven as well, like he was as a coach. Simon, Nigel came in, he had a very public three-year plan. 
do you feel that work's done and actually you've sort of got a, a one-year plan, then another one-year plan, you, you, you don't have that development period? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's, there'll, be, there'll be a few changes which we need to make sure that they have a little bit of time to to, to bed in, but um, the development is is pretty much done. Um, there are always going to be players coming through the system uh, that we want to develop, but on the whole, um, this this year was due to be the performance year uh, in Nigel's plan, and uh, I don't see that changing. You know, we've we've got to now step out of that development stage and actually um, realise that we're here to win things. Um, as a player, you uh, look back at your career and you always wish you could have won certain things. And all those things that I look back on is stuff that I did with my club. Uh, and uh, I want these players to understand that they, these days can go quite quickly. So it's very important that we pick players on form and, and hopefully that will be the case in, in the hooking position. We've also got four very good scrum halves as well um, and we've also got a very competitive back row so it's not the only position which we're fortunate to have um, depth in uh, and that's, a, yeah, that's a, you know, a challenge to man manage and balance that selection in those positions. But, uh, Sure, we'll see the best out of those players because of the competition within those little areas. Tight head props, loose head props, quality props. Uh, they're, um, they're difficult to find, and, and uh, you know, we're very fortunate at the moment that we have a number of very good young props coming through. Um, we were very, very lucky last year with Yester and Reese Thomas, who um, unfortunately both had to retire at the same time, which wasn't ideal in our succession plan. So the tight head position, um, or the prop position in particular, is is something that we've been very conscious of trying to um, fill. But um, you know, there's not that much quality out there, and we didn't, we don't want to go out and just get anyone. We want to get the right person, and that takes a little bit of time.